Good morning, my bipolar people. I have to have my music playing today. I have it playing low on my phone. But I need Dolph today. <clears throat> I need mean, Dolph today. So I hope y'all can hear me. I'm not gonna have it too loud. But just so y'all know. This one is so appropriate because today, well, first of all, thank you for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, all of that. You already know. But um, thank you for joining me. Thank you to my bipolar people. Thank you for my bipolar people that are consistent with me. Thank you for those that actually check up on me, email, phone, however y'all get at me. Y'all know I love that. Y'all know I love you for that, and I appreciate you. Um, so, today, I like, since I woke up, I'm like, I think I need to do a bipolar shit today. Let me first tell y'all, I kicked it. I mean, not forever. But Sunday, in the wee hours in the morning, I smoked my last one. Um, now I told y'all the last time, right, when I, when I didn't smoke and I was in this motherfucker rage and that was just some other shit, but that was some other shit because there was other extenuating circumstances to that, right? Um, but this shit is a mental mission. That's what I'm on now. It's called, I'm calling it my mental mission. Because there's so many things that need to be done. There's so many things that need to be said. There's so many things that I need to do. And I can't do it in this motherfucker, depressed. All the information that I have, all the information that I've collected, all the data, like I literally have data and piles of information related to mental illness and how we can spread awareness. You can't spread awareness if nobody's listening. I was out there before, I was making them listen. I was in the street. I was walking the street during that time when my car was confiscated in the Hamptons for 41 days. We ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> I need not. But anyway, so I was. I didn't have a car at the time, so I was really out there walking. I was really out there getting my petition signed in the community because we don't have enough people or enough resources in the community to help us for mental health. I've talked about this before, I've talked about it, I talk about it all the time, but that's something that I usually have to do and to push my agenda, I'm going to have to keep talking about it in this way. Um, mental illness is for real. For those that know that they suffer, for those that don't know that they suffer, for those that are kind of on the fence, we have to get in touch with this shit. It's time to get in touch with this shit. There's no flaking around it. It's no, oh, well, maybe I'll deal with it some other time because that's what I did. And guess what, me? Oh, I'll take care of it some other time. I'll address things some other time. I'll go to therapy some other time. You know what that time did? It took seven years of my life. Seven years of my life. My breakdown started in 2016. This shit took seven years of my life. Only just now I'm realizing that I'm phasing out and transitioning out of this dark period you know they say that seven years of bad luck or whatever my favorite number is seven like there's a whole lot that runs around the number seven I'm actually going to study the number seven today if somebody has some information for me I mean I already know because it's my, my favorite number so I know that number seven is supposed to bring fortune and um, intuitive thinking and things like that but I need to really know why the number seven is surrounding me in my space right now. If you got a suggestion or a hint, well, let me know. Talk to me about the number seven and why it's so pertinent to the space I'm in right now. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about a different things with me because y'all know when I get on, I start talking about if I'm up, if I'm down. I talk about not the celebrities. But I do talk about the, the stuff that happens. I do talk about that because it relates to us as well. Um, I was going to go live the other night. Like, I just had this thing in me where I was like, you know what? I'm going to go live. I'm going to call my homie, see if he'll come live with me and try to bust some things out to talk about some things so that you actually have a dialogue, right? 
It's just now. This is just me talking my shit and talking my bipolar shit. But that me inviting somebody into this space is a dialogue about my bipolar disorder, his bipolar disorder. How do we cope? How do we deal? What we need to do for each other? How can we be a support to each other? I'm so ready to get that started, but. Again, this thing is slow going for me. You know why it's slow going? Because it's just me by myself. I don't have a, I don't have any friends to, you know, I don't have anybody that really relates to me on this particular part of my life. You know what I mean? I have my loved ones who understand, my, my loved ones who say they'll support me, but um, nobody really knows this thing unless you're really going through it. And that's just... You can't talk to me about nothing related to the bipolar disorder if you're not experiencing it. Sorry. Um, nothing in your books. Nothing that you say in a classroom. None of that stuff matters or is going to be relative to me if it's not coming from somebody who's experiencing it. But, like, this really is my mental mission. First of all, let's get with the fact that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Nobody gives a shit. They'll post some stuff or whatever, but nobody gives a shit. The other part of that, though, is that July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. So, we have to get start caring, right? Now, here's the thing. In 2016, no. That's when I broke down. But in 2018, when I started my LLC and I was trying to, you know, get this mental health initiative started, I know my nails look terrible. Please don't even look at them. I'm going to get my nails done today. Bye. Um, so the the thing is, is that when I started this, it was it was meant to be for awareness. It was meant to be to pull people in because I know that there's nowhere for us in the community. There's nowhere we can go and deal with our shit in the community. So let me formulate something and then get people understanding that I understand what you're going through. You're not alone. I'm not alone. I needed to know I wasn't alone. Um, so I um, I started this to, to and, and, and I started it as a mission because it was it was it was so hard. It was so hard to wake up every day and not being able to get up. It was so hard to watch my baby boy ask me to play with him. Knock on my door because I'm in my room in my bed slump smoking all day long, right? This was back then. And my baby knocking on my door asking me to play with him. Mommy, can you play with me? And I just couldn't. This shit is real. We live this, we live this shit. So people, you take it as a joke, you know, do you want to do your little memes about, you know, you know every, everybody has their little trendy things about people that, you know, experience things with mental illness. This is not a joke. Um, can I just say something right quick? Because I feel some kind of way that there was no tribute to Dolph. Now, I, don't, I stopped watching the Grammys like years ago. Way before people started saying, we ain't watching the Grammys no more. I stopped watching those award shows or whatever because I realized that they have an agenda. So I stopped watching it. But can I know why there wasn't a tribute to Dolph? He's a, he's a philanthropist. He took care of his community. He took care of his family. His family is still, his family will be great for the rest of their lives. He got hit after hit after hit after hit. I don't care what I listen to with Dolph. Because I don't listen to Dolph and Key. I tell y'all. I mean, maybe I need to start opening up my, my, my library and shit so that I can hear some of this other shit. But it means no, never mind to me. But why didn't he get a tribute? But guess what? It, guess what? We are tributing that pop up museum, and I gotta look at the dates again because because I'm getting in this better space that's been telling me to get ready. My spirit has been telling me for the past month, get ready. Don't know for what, but get ready. So I think that's a part of me stop smoking so that I can clear my head a little bit. 
get my space together. You see, I'm in a whole different area. Change. You see where the bird cage is now? There's all type of crazy shit going on around this motherfucker. But I started packing. Very like minimally, but I started packing. Because I know I got to get the fuck out of here. Um, but there's so many things that I, I did not put forward. Me. I didn't put myself forward. Me, right now, like I just said, I have all the materials. I have all the information. I have a whole business. I have everything set up, right? But what have I been waiting for? In my depression. In my depression, sitting here, laying here, I'm waiting for somebody to say, oh, well, come bring your stuff. <laughs> right? Like, that's not going to happen that way. I can tell a hundred fucking people that I have this and I have that and I've been working on this for years. I have something that can kick off today, right? What the fuck that shit mean if I'm laying here fucking depressed and ain't doing shit? And not that I'm not doing shit, but more so that I can't. Because that's how this bipolar shit works. It literally debilitates you. It literally makes you not want to move. It makes you not want to leave the house, even on a sunny day that I crave for. I still would not go outside if my bipolar shit has me clean. But then that's when I, like, my mental mission. My mental, this is, this is it. I gotta get up. I gotta, fuck, fuck looking for the opportunity. I gotta go get it. I gotta go get my opportunities. And, my, and people might not see my mission. People might not see what it is that I'm trying to do and how I'm trying to do it. But I feel like in baby steps, it, they could. I feel like in, I, can't, I can't tell you the, the meat of what I'm trying to do because then somebody else, what? You put some shit in the air. The air take it on to somebody else, right? Or just take it and vanish. Or you put it in the air, somebody else get it and take it and do something with it. You don't know how many times that has happened to me. You don't know how many times I've said something, right? Or, or made a proposal or suggested something for me. And then somebody else has that opportunity. I remember back in my, in my street running days, right? <laughs> I used to be in the street a lot. I used to work every day. But I was still in the streets at night. Um, my nightlife. And I wanted to... I, first of all, it's still something that I want to do. And I shouldn't even put that in the air. But I'm going to just say it anyway. I always wanted to own a bar. I always wanted to own a bar. I was hanging in a bar. That shit was called the Blue Palace. When I was fucking 15 years old. Probably younger than that. I ain't going to tell you where it's at. What town it is. <laughs> Somewhere in Jersey. But it was around that, you know, with that time with me breaking out and, and me realizing that that foster home shit and that group home shit wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? And so I was in the street. And, um, and I was hanging in a bar called the Blue Palace at 15 years old. And ever since then, I've wanted to own a bar. Right? So then, you know, other points in your life and then whatever, I decided and then I had children and I wasn't really in the street and then I fell back into it. Um, and I still want to own a bar. So the bar that I was hanging in, this is a funny story. This is a funny story, but it also goes into what I was saying. So I'm hanging in my spot or whatever. And this was my spot. Like, I was like... I was brand new because everybody was already like a family in that bar. You know what I'm saying? But then I come because I work at night and I get off at 11. And it's right around the way from where I worked at. So I start going in this bar. And it was like just my energy, just the people that was, you know, attracted to that situation at that time. It turned into a dope situation. It turned into, KK turned into norm in this bitch, right? Like, so every time KK came in, hey, KK, 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 KK. That's what it was. And I, I guess at that point in my life, I kind of needed that energy. It was healthy for me. It was, it was dope. It was dope to have somewhere to go. And not just that spot. It was other spots too. Or we would all go to different spots. Like, that was my nightlife. My bar life was, was what it was. So, I wanted to be a bartender. I think if I'm hanging in the bar all the time, I'm always making some money too, right? So I wanted to be a bartender. It just so happened 
thatch. I'm also mouthy. Clearly, you can tell I'm mouthy. So this particular, um, he wasn't the owner, but he was the manager. And he knew I was mouthy. And me and him would always go through stuff. We would argue or whatever, have some words, and then we'd be cool as hell. You know, like, it, it just went like that for dur dur during the duration. So when I started proposing to him that I wanted to butt in, he was like, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> not here. You'll be fighting. Like, you can't have me beating up the... And I was like, come on now. When it comes to my money, when it comes to my job, I don't play that shit. I'm not about to let nobody fuck up my livelihood. So a bitch just might be able to get some shit off. As long as she ain't put her hands on me. But she might be able to get some shit off talking shit to me while I'm working. Because ain't no bitch going to fuck up my money. Never. Um... So, it's time, like, so we went through that, he was thinking about it, he was thinking about it, he finally decided that he was going to let me work. It was a Thursday. It was a Thursday night I was in the bar. I was supposed to start working that Sunday. And what happened? I think I kind of said this in a little bit in, in another post when I talked about my homegirl that they were saying things about me and her her people. But that one, that it was that fucking night that we brawled out in the fucking bar. We fucking brawled out. Like, I had the, like, like, the bitch was just whatever. So she posted up on me and she picked up a pool stick. That Corona bottle ate her ass up first that I had, but it cut me, right? And then homegirl come over there to try to break it up. My homegirl, she come over there to try to break it up. Somebody hits her in the head with a mug. So we, I'm talking about a whole fucking brawl. So guess what? <laughs> guess what that did? That Thursday night ended my bartending career. <laughs> Before it even got started. Before it even got started. But what happened is, right, is that because people knew I was up for that opportunity, and because people didn't like me in their own way, now most of everybody liked me, but with certain energy, I can't fuck with it, and I just don't. And I don't have to not like you. I just don't fuck with your energy, so I, I just, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, like, some people, when they don't, when they feel certain things, they got to make sure you know that they don't like you, and they got to be mean to you and all that type of shit. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I just don't fuck with you. It's easy for me. Because doing all of that, trying to show somebody you don't like them, that take a lot of fucking energy. Nobody trying to do all that. That take a lot of fucking energy for every fucking day you trying to show somebody that you don't like them for a fucking year. Or whatever the time is. Um, so anyway. So somebody had that. Somebody had grabbed that out the air that KK was up to be a bartender. So what they had to do. Somebody that I never really didn't, like, didn't dislike her. Just don't fuck with you. Because I felt... Your energy was phony. I felt like you was coming to be a follower. Your arrogance, arrogance is confidence is two different things. You wasn't coming in confident. You was coming in very arrogant. And I'm just saying this because this is the person that took my opportunity to bar me. Right? So now, right, in the world, in, 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 in our little social world, right, now she's your fucking favorite bar star. Really? Really? And if you would know how many problems this person has caused for me, just coming, just showing up, just coming to hang out, just coming because everybody K, 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 they didn't like that. So this chick would literally have grown ass men approach me to start with me to get me put out the bar. So yeah, I was angry at that bitch. Yeah, I, I talked a lot of shit. I don't talk it now because I don't give a fuck about that bitch. But so it was always looking like it was something. So when I'm in my space, right, and I'm mad and I'm angry, it only looks like that. It doesn't look like the problem that was caused from the other person. It doesn't look like that. Mind you, it don't even look like the person, the way that person watched me, the way that person studied me. And you turned that love of me into hate. Oh, I'm not talking about the people that's talking to me. I'm talking about the shit from my bar days. Because I'm dead ass serious. I'm dead ass serious. Now she's your favorite bar star. And not really because people don't really like her. People don't like her because you're still arrogant. You didn't even grow into anything. You just... The same. I started seeing like 
I was circle. We all dealt with the same circle. I just never, anytime everybody wanted, and she wanted to be around, I just never wanted to be around that. So I just didn't be around. But I see that she felt her way around in different circles. But why make it a problem for KK when I come in somewhere? Because then what? Do I still get shine? I don't mean to, because I have my own light. I have my own light, so I don't have to take nobody else's light. I don't have to block nobody else's shine. I don't do that. But that's what happens to me. And it happened to me consistently, over and over and over again. And it happened to me during a time when I was really in a dark space, when I probably shouldn't even been going out anyway. But I was. And that shit was happening to me, and, and people were dogging me. People were dogging me. So I just wanted to bring that out because I wanted to make sure that I, I just had this, I don't know why, right? I just had this yesterday. It, it, it was just in my spirit, right? It was just in my spirit all day. Why is my biometric not working? I don't know. Um, and because y'all know I'm on Instagram a little bit. <laughs> But in that little note thing, this is what I posted there. <laughs> I love that song, y'all. Yeah. And two for me. I don't know what I do with it. Here we go. So I said. Some people are where they are because of who they kick down to step up. And I want to take my bartender because nobody hears it. Nobody hears it from my point of view. Only thing people are hearing is that I don't and where they get this narrative from that I'm jealous of people. That's what you can do. You can spin a narrative into anything you wanted to do, anything you wanted about somebody that's not well. That's going through shit like I was. You can spin anything. So they spit this whole narrative that I'm jealous. Jealous of who? Even when I was down, I can't. I don't have it in me to be jealous of nobody. If anything, I'm always bigging people up. I'm always congratulating people. I'm always wanting to see people win. Like I said, though, nobody does that for me. Nobody does that for me. That's why I do it for myself. But, um... So they spent this this narrative, right? I, I hate using y'all little trendy little internet social media words, but that's what it is right now. The narrative that KK was jealous of this one, KK's jealous of that one, KK's a. How the fuck would I be jealous of you when you've been watching me? I I I, I think I posted. This is what I posted. Some shit. I said some shit like. I used to be lit. <laughs> like, I really used to be lit. I used to really light up a spot when I show up. It used to be really dope. I don't live like that no more. But I just light up. Now I just light up. You see me going. Even in my depression, I'm going. I light up whenever I feel like it. So... The people bringing me down, it's not going to work anymore. I got my own shit. That shit brings me down enough. And when I climb up out of that, it's like, what the fuck? What you bitches think you're going to do? <laughs> That's what the energy be. You know what I'm saying? Once I climb up out of my own shit. But yeah, so um, that that has been, and it, it, it wasn't just that situation. Oh, well, because she's bartending out. I'm jealous of her. No, because I'm still showing up. I'm still drinking. My mother's still buying me drinks. I'm still having a fucking ball. But you watching that and you hating it. Because you still hate how people, how people's energy comes at me. Because you had to be so phony for the, for the, for the energy you got. I digress. I'm going to get off of that. But I just needed to put that out there. There was something in my spirit that needed to just get that out. Like, People will mean you no fucking good when they don't know shit about you and you don't know a good goddamn thing about them. And don't want to. But that particular situation really um, impacted a lot in my social life. It 
it impacted my social life a lot. And so, if and when I were to ever see this person, because I ain't looking for her, but if and when I was to ever see this person, um, because it was a time when I wanted to slam this motherfucker. Oh, because now you think you tough too, so they say KK had a fight in a bar. KK had a bar fight. Next week, I get banned from the bar for a couple of weeks or whatever. But the next week, oh, this, now this bitch fighting in the bar. So it was a lot. It was a lot. And it's, it's, it feels fucked up for you to know that somebody watches you like that. That somebody take pieces of you and then they hate you for it. You watched somebody. You watched me. You studied me. You took pieces of me. And then you hate me for it. So... I just need to get that off my soul. Um, there, there might be people who can relate. There might, if there's, if, if there are these silent ones, right, that don't want me to know that they watch me, and you know who I am, and you know who I am in the street, then you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, and you know that shit is real. The same way I'm giving it to you. Now, what I was saying was, if I would ever see this chick, to have. Negative energy right now for that would be redundant. It would be not healthy to my space right now. It would be stupid. I'm not looking forward to seeing this person. But if I happen to, I think I would actually want to have a conversation with her. And I think I, I want to have a conversation. But you know, you don't want to have a conversation with somebody that you know going to sit in your face a lot. Nobody's going to admit that they were inspired by you when it turns into hate. Nobody's going to admit that. Nobody's going to admit that, yeah, I watched you, I really liked your vibe or whatever, but I didn't know how to approach you or whatever, and it just seemed like, like, nobody's going to come like that. But guess how I'll come? Your energy at that time was very arrogant. You were not somebody, plus they were like really some, some, some years younger than me. Um, so at that time, at the age I was then, and then they were younger than that, right? That wasn't somebody that I wanted to be around with the energy you were coming with. Um, and then to, I don't know at right now, at the space she's in right now. But I know the couple of years ago, the last time that I saw this person at a birthday party in a bar where the person I was coming to show love for and what she tried to do that day, I could have ate that shit up. I could have tore that fucking bar up. I didn't. But of course, I already told you, right? I ain't no tough bitch. But I think she wants people to think she's tough. Okay, you're a tough bitch. I'm a rough bitch. Can you fuck with that? I'm a rough bitch in every sense of the word. That means there ain't no fucking, I'm not trying to tussle and all this other shit and pull a hair, no bitch. I'm going to bust you in your fucking nose and we're going to go from there. But why am I talking about that, right? Because I'm talking about somebody that caused so many problems in my life. So many problems in my social life that it made it difficult for me to even go out. It made it difficult for me to go out and then when I go out, people talking about me. So then there are all these other narratives, right? All these other stories about KK. It started from that. I felt like I needed to get that off my chest. If, if this person was woman enough to come talk to me, which I never think they will be, but if they were, talk to me. Let me know what your issues were. Let me know what I did to you that you felt like you needed to focus in on me to cause the problems that you did for me. Will you admit it? I don't believe you will. And then this is also the kind of person that I told you, we had the same circle. She's no longer friends with anybody in the circle. Of everybody that she was, everyone, every time somebody want to go somewhere, she, oh, I'm going. She, she, she a follower. So now you a follower, but you, you got four or five thousand, six thousand followers on whatever. So now everybody following you. Because that's your energy. You need that. I didn't need that. I just got it. It was, it was fun to be, it's fun to be me. It's fun to just be a real motherfucker and motherfuckers see that and love it. And respond to it in that way. It was fun. When you let an arrogant motherfucker 
get in a space where they feel like they're in control, it turns the whole scene into something else. So I needed to get that off my chest. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about and you know who I'm talking about. But my life is not consistent about that. I just, my spirit just needed to, boof, to let that out. Because of the narratives that have been spun about me. Because of the lies that have been told about me. Because everybody looking at me. Just because I'll beat your ass the fuck up in the fucking bar. Don't mean I'm coming to the bar looking for a fight. That means if you fuck with me. You might you you risk the chance of getting beat the fuck up. Or me too. I'm not saying I could beat everybody. I'm just saying. It usually happens the other way. Um... Anyway, I needed to get that off my chest, clearly. But back to my mental mission. My mental mission is on. First of all, I wanted to just show y'all this because I'm about to get my other thing going. I'm waiting for my other stuff to come. But I have these. I'm going to do it on my other page. Um, this is the, to, for mental health, right? These these bands. So if you want to support, it's a band to stop the, stop the stigma for mental health. Now I've been had these, but I ordered some more. I ordered magnets. I've been had these pens. And these are nice because they say little sayings or whatever. So, you know, um, matter of fact, let me take one out. I got another pack of these. I gotta find my pens. But anyway, I am I just mental health. I'm I'm getting myself prepared for mental health awareness month. That's all you need to know right now. Fuck with me. This is KK with the bipolar shit. I didn't want it to go over 30 minutes, but of course, clearly I had some shit on my head, right? But um, when you're dealing with your stuff, you have to deal. You have to figure it out. You have to know that you're not alone in this bipolar shit. You have to know that there's help. You have to know that. Uh, and if, you, if there's no help right there where you at, you got to go look for it. You got to go get that shit. Me, I just sat here or sat wherever I was at and in my space and along them days and I just couldn't get up and I can't, you know what? I had to stop the blow, right? I had to stop that because, not forever, but I know for right now, I had to stop that so that I can get focused. So now that I've done that, so now I've been able to put myself in a little bit more different kind of focus. What's up with the beat? I'm not going to pick too much more because now we have 32 minutes. So, thank you. <laughs> Let me stop. Because I didn't even want this to play because then they'll be copying. Come on, y'all. And I like that song, too. Um, so, anyway. I have um, taken up all my time. I'm about to be on 34 minutes. I don't want to go no longer. But thank you for always fucking me with the bipolar shit. One of these days, I'm going live. Word is gone. I'm going live so that we can really do this shit. I'm going to get with my people and see how we can make that happen. But I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I don't really get no traction on my pages because nobody wants to hear me talking clearly. Nobody likes KK talking with the bipolar shit, but you better get the fuck with it because this shit is so fucking for real, okay? Stop denying it to your fucking self. Stop skipping over my fucking video to be an asshole and get your shit right. Get your head right. Get your bipolar shit together. Fuck with me. Mwah.